Good evening, everyone. Sound like Dracula. Good evening. Thank you for being here today. And if you want to go ahead and grab your Bible and uh, turn with me to Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8. And uh, or turn on your phone or your laptop, your pa tablet, however you're following along. And, uh, and thank you for uh, for being here. And um, I took it on my Love Life shirt tonight and uh, just let you know we will be uh, going uh, to be part uh, of a uh, Love Life prayer walk uh, the first weekend in March. Uh, so if you would put that on your calendar um, and make plans uh, to go with us, uh, we'll be letting you know the details of that as it gets a little closer and how we're going to uh, stay um, corona safe. Uh, at the same time, we try to uh, keep some unborn babies safe, and um, which kind of leads me into my topic for tonight uh, in uh, in the book of Proverbs again, chapter eight. Uh, we're going to be looking at the fifteenth and sixteenth verse, and I know that uh, this is not necessarily um, an election time. Uh, although it won't be long until uh, the May voting uh, process. Uh, but it just seems like um, in our world today, uh, you know, used to, to me, it seemed like you heard about politics maybe uh, two or three weeks before the election in November and for a week or so after, and then people uh, got a life and went on. Uh, but uh, there is so much um, bitter. Uh, bitter division and dare I say hatred um, there is such a uh, I also think uh, just to give you a little bit of my uh, and opinions all it is don't you don't need to um, crucify me or bury me in comments or whatever else it's just my opinion um, you're welcome to yours um, that there was a time when there wasn't that much difference uh, between a candidate, regardless of what party uh, he represented or, or she. Um, there just, it just wasn't that big a difference. Uh, but we are certainly in a time uh, where there is a huge uh, gap uh, between uh, the left and the right. Uh, and there are some still, there, there are a handful, I think, that are probably so, still somewhere in the middle, but um, obviously on many issues, uh, abortion being one, um, I, I don't think there's a middle ground. You're either for it or you're against it. Um, you know, this whole um, transgender um, L, B, A, B, C, D, all those letters, um, you know, there, there's a big divide, uh, between our political leaders. And, um, what concerns me that I kind of want to address a little bit tonight from a biblical, uh, spiritual point of view is that I am, uh, deeply, uh, concerned that many, uh, many Christians uh, have, um, and it's easy to do. I, I, there, there have been times when um, I've had the same kind of feelings. Uh, we are so frustrated uh, and so tired uh, of all the, the just the, the constant um, bickering and arguing. Um, and whichever side you're on, you see the other side. Uh, basically, uh, again, there was a time when, when I don't think the two parties felt this way about each other. Uh, but we are at a place where um, each party, uh, each side, whatever side you're on, thinks that they are exactly right, and the other side is trying to destroy the country. Um, and so I, I think a lot of Christians, um, God-fearing Christians, have... Uh, kind of checked out. Uh, when you look at the numbers of those, again, who profess to be Christian, um, who voted, 
Um, again, it is somewhat disappointing. Um, and so I, I want us to look at a, a passage tonight because uh, I believe that being a, a, we talk about stewardship. And usually when we talk about stewardship, we're talking about offering, we're talking about tithing. Uh, but I believe being a good steward uh, involves, uh, includes all every segment uh, of the Christian's life that we are good stewards of all that we have been blessed with and as Americans we have been blessed uh, with the opportunity to vote we have been blessed with the opportunity to uh, right now anyway uh, we have free speech we can speak out um, we can, um, you know, certainly we can contact our leaders, um, and we have an obligation, I think, to be good stewards uh, of that. And part of the way we do that is by being um, educated um, on uh, the issues uh, that uh, are relevant, uh, that we are educated um, on um, our on the candidates that are running. Uh, I'll be just brutally honest. Uh, pretty much every major election um, in, in my uh, 26 years now at Poplar Grove, I have uh, been able to obtain and provide free uh, copies of, um, of voter guides that uh, tell us the positions uh, of the various candidates. Uh, and I'm, I'm always, uh, always uh, disappointed uh, in how few of those uh, are picked up. And, um, you know, that tells me a couple things. Tells me we're not educating ourselves uh, about those who are running. Um, and then the other thing it says is, is to me, what, well, the way I interpret it, I may be wrong, uh, is that it says that people have their mind made up. They're going to vote a certain way for a certain party, for a certain person, uh, regardless, without knowing what that person stands for. Um, and the, the reality is anymore, because a person um, carries a certain party label, uh, you don't necessarily know uh, what they stand for. And I think our nation uh, is suffering. I think our democracy uh, is being undermined uh, by the silence uh, of the church. Uh, I, I think it is our, our democracy, uh, certainly it's being attacked from a lot of places. Uh, but I think one of the, the ways that our republic is being, um, is being harmed the most uh, is because Christians uh, are failing uh, to educate themselves, failing to speak out, um, you know, um, and, and to be involved in the election process, uh, to learn where our candidates stand on issues like uh, abortion, where they stand on uh, positions like homosexuality. You know what? One of the biggest areas that the church needs, I think, to be more alert, more awake, um, is generally we we have a fa you have a pretty decent idea what a uh, what a candidate for a a major federal office, Senate, Congress president what where they stand just because they're on television debating and everything else running commercials uh, but local politics uh, councils and county commissioners and mayors um, ha have a huge impact on our life uh, locally uh, and that we need to be aware um, of of where they stand uh, and the challenge for us is, as Christians, and it, it is more, more important than it has ever been, is not uh, our political party uh, or how we've always voted or how grandma voted, uh, but that our vote, that our position uh, matches up with the Word of God and honors Jesus Christ uh, Himself. Well, the candidate I'm choosing uh, bring honor. Will it please uh, 
uh, God. Now, again, and th there's a line. Uh, you know, I, I don't expect. I, I don't want my candidate to be my preacher. Uh, I, I don't want him to be my pastor. I don't. You know, um, and and generally speaking, what we have to do is uh, choose between the lesser of two evils. But uh, to vote, for, pick one who uh, is the closest. Uh, to the Word of God, that we stand uh, on that principle. In the book of Proverbs that we're uh, looking at tonight, the book of Proverbs chapter 14, that's not the, we're going to be in chapter 8, but the book of Proverbs chapter 14 says, righteousness exalts a nation, um, but, uh, but sin is a disgrace to any people. Uh, and so we have an obligation uh, to be good stewards of our vote, of our voice uh, in this time. And so as we look at this passage uh, this evening, I, I just, um, I, you know, again, we're not voting right now, uh, but honestly, it, it seems like anymore we're always uh, in political season. We're always hearing political stuff constantly. Um, and so we need to be aware uh, of some things. And I, I want to share with you six biblical principles uh, about how we vote, how, what, what kind of citizens, uh, how, we, how are we good stewards uh, of our citizenship uh, as Americans? First of all, uh, let's look at our text uh, this morning or uh, this evening. Uh, look with me in uh, Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 15. Uh, it says this, By me, speaking of God, by God, kings reign and princes decree justice. By God, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. Uh, that's our text for this evening. And I, again, I want to share with you uh, six of these principles uh, that, uh, again, I think we need to keep uh, in mind politically uh, as stewards. And I, I'm not going to, uh, in case some of you are already thinking of cutting me off, I'm not going to tell you how to vote or who to vote for or which party's right or wrong. I'm, I'm like you, I'm getting to the point where I think they're all crazy. Uh, and that means I've even got a, an even greater obligation. Uh, to prepare and to constantly uh, watch um, and, and, and look at what my politicians, my leaders uh, are, are doing and speak out uh, and, and be a godly influence uh, on others uh, as, uh, as it comes to politics. And so first of all, there is the principle of involvement, the principle of involvement. The book of Matthew says, render unto Caesar uh, the things that are Caesar's and unto God the things that are God's. Uh, and usually uh, this verse is taken uh, and applied strictly to the idea uh, of um of paying taxes, uh, but it actually speaks of all of involvement, uh, that Christians should be involved uh, by uh, in the, the political process, um, and uh, that we should be aware, that we should be involved, we should, we, we should be watching Caesar. Uh, we should know what Caesar is doing. Um, again, we need to stay educated. We need to stay um, involved, alert, um, and, and and be aware uh, of uh, of what's going on politically. And again, I'm not just talking about in Washington D.C., but in Raleigh, um, in, uh, in in our county governments and our city governments uh, that make rules that really directly. Uh, impact us uh, locally, uh, that we need Christians to be uh, involved. We need Christians um, who will step up and, uh, and run for office, and then we need Christians to vote for those Christians uh, so that they actually uh, win and, and, and get in, um, in, um, in office. Um, I'm not going to call names tonight, uh, but I ask you, 
to think for a moment uh, from local offices all the way to the White House. Um, and some of you are going to say you're asking me to judge. No, I'm not asking you to judge. Uh, I'm asking you to call it like you see it. Uh, if you, how many politicians uh, have you ever seen, ever, uh, especially recently, uh, that you would say, yep, that's a Christian. Now, I'm not saying how many of them talk about God or how many of them go, but by their actions. The Bible says you know a man by his fruit. Um, we need Christians who are willing, unfortunately, uh, to get in the hog pen. And I know when you when you wrestle with a hog, um, you know you both get muddy, but only one of you enjoys it. Uh, but we need Christians who are willing to step up and run for office on school boards, um, on county commissioner, city council, um, you know, and you know um, we you know other offices. We need to be involved. And for those of us who may not be qualified or able uh, to to fill those positions, we need to go vote uh, for those who are. Uh, we need to call out uh, those who are uh, who are making decisions that are contrary to the Word of God. Uh, it's time for it's past time uh, for the Church of Jesus Christ to. St- Stand up uh, for the Word of God, uh, not just in the church house, but in the White House. Uh, that we are, you know, um, it amazes me uh, when I see, again, this, the reports that say how the, the number of Christians who do not vote, the number of Christians who vote for candidates who are obviously um, opposed uh, to things that that are godly. Um, I, I just be blunt with you. I will never, ever vote for anyone for any office that is for abortion. If you don't like that, cut me off. Because I'm just telling you, if they are for abortion, I will not. If you're going to run for office... And you are pro-abortion. I don't care if you're running to be the dog catcher or in charge of the city sewer. I I, I don't care. I'm not voting for you. Uh, And I'm going to do everything I can. I'm going to speak out loud and long to keep anybody else from voting for you. Uh, We need to be involved. The principle of involvement. The principle of intercession. The principle of intercession. Paul wrote to young Timothy, he said, I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, and that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in godliness and honesty, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Whatever side they're on, once they're elected, they need prayer. I had someone I posted last fall, not long, well, maybe it's later than fall. It hadn't been that long ago, actually. Um, I posted something about praying uh, for President Biden. And I had somebody um, who, who I don't even know, uh, but somehow or another is on my friends list in social media, uh, just crucify me. Uh, and say only an uh, you know only an apostate uh, would would pray for him, and I, I ended I, I, I probably wasn't nice, but I ended up telling him, "Pardon me, sir, but you're just ignorant." Um, you know, to start with, we're commanded in this passage to pray for our leaders. It doesn't say pray for the kings uh, that you agree with. It doesn't say pray for the ones you voted for. It says pray for the kings and. All that are in authority. Praying for the failure of our religious leaders is like paying for your pilot uh, on your airline to be a drunk. Um, I, I pray, and I know what I posted now. I posted that my prayer is that President Biden will be the best president this nation has ever had. Now I'm not. Sure, I don't think that's going to happen. I think he's already probably blew that already. Um, but um, that's still my prayer. Um, I pray that he's the best that we've ever had. 
Um, you know, and, and, and the only way he can be the best is to line up with God's word. Uh, and so our politicians, um, I have some, uh, good many or several who, who listen, uh, and watch, uh, these videos and all that I'm putting out that have served in, uh, in, in politics. Uh, and I've listened to them and I've watched them. Um, he, you know, I think sometimes it's harder to be a local politician, uh, than it is to be a federal politician. If you're a Senator or a Congressman or something, you got bodyguards, they can keep you away from everybody. But if you're a local County commissioner or city councilman, you got to go to the grocery store with your neighbors and they'll, they'll let you have it. Uh, and so the principle of, uh, of intercession that we pray uh, for these men and women who govern us uh, to have the leadership of God uh, on their life. Third principle is the principle of independence. And by that, I mean uh, we have, even as Christians, uh, the obligation to obey and respect our government to obey and respect our government. I hear people say, well, he's not my president. Joe Biden, I'll say this, is my president. Uh, Kamala Harris is my vice president. Nancy Pelosi is the Speaker of the House. Schumer is the majority leader in the Senate. Uh, Roy Cooper is our governor. Whether I like them or not, whether I agree with them or not, whether I voted for them or not, is irrelevant. They deserve our respect. Now, they deserve our obedience, except when they are obviously disobedient to Scripture. The Bible tells us in the book of Acts, we ought to obey God rather than man. Now, even in that, I believe we are still to be respectful. Um, I, you know, what happened uh, a month ago in, uh, on the Capitol was, was wrong. Um, you know, that, that, you, you just don't, that's just not the way you do things. And, and as Christians, we respect our leaders and we obey our leaders up until the point where it violates, uh, the word of God. Uh, we are independent in that regard. So we have the principle of, uh, involvement, the principle of intercession, the principle, uh, of independence. Uh, nothing is politically right that is morally wrong. And we should reject, uh, let me say it in a positive way. We should elect candidates uh, who will uphold in their personal life and their political life godly principles. Uh, again, righteousness exalteth a nation, the book of Proverbs says. Uh, and so we need to examine our candidates um, and find candidates that will um, in their personal and political life, um, will we'll live morally, godly, um, a, as much as possible. Um, I'm not asking them to be perfect, uh, but that should be their desire. Um, the second, uh, the, the next principle uh, that goes along, principle of involvement, the principle of uh, intersection, the principle of, uh, of, of independence, uh, the principle of inspection. Here's one uh, really that everything boils down to, honestly. Uh, we should, listen, we, you can't take a man anymore just because of what, or a woman just because of what party they represent. We need to inspect them. Uh, and, and three areas, let me, uh, and, and these are three biggies in our society today. First of all, we need to know where they stand on the rule, on, on biblical family structure. 
Bible says, again, in Genesis, let us make man in our image and our likeness. Let them have dominion. And he says, so he created man in his own image. In the image of God created him. It goes on. It says, God blessed him uh, and commanded him, be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth. Uh, and he goes on in that passage, as you know, and says, that that man uh, takes uh, that man leaves his mother and father and cleaves unto his wife. God created man and woman. Uh, that's where I'm headed with that. Um, we need to elect. We need to find candidates uh, that honor the biblical structure of a family. Just I'm on a roll today, and I, I'm, if I'm upsetting some of you, if they're too dumb to know how a family ought to be put together, they're not smart enough to be in office, okay? They need to be um, straight on the biblical family. Second issue that we need to know where they stand, and this is really critical uh, in today's world, we need to know where they stand on the local church. And by that, what I'm talking about, I'm not talking about their theology or their doctrine but that the local church uh, is free from governmental control, uh, governmental interference, uh, that they don't, you know, we, we, listen, we've got to ask that question anymore. Once upon a time, you didn't have to. We've got to ask that question today. Uh, we're, we're coming to a place very quickly where uh, if a preacher speaks out against homosexual lifestyle, he's going to be charged with hate speech. You don't believe me? Uh, get on the Internet and do a little Googling about Canada. Um, we're, we're coming to that point very quickly uh, in, in this nation. So we need to know that uh, a candidate, where he stands on uh, the freedom uh, of the church to preach the gospel and the truth, uh, of words God of, of the word of God and then the third one is and I've already touched on this so I won't stay there long the third area we need to know about um, is uh, their position the sacredness of human life from birth to death not just abortion but where they stand on euthanasia because I'm gonna tell you something a candidate uh, a nation that will Kill their unborn children. And I've said this, and I've said it, and I've said it, and I'll keep saying it. A, a nation, a candidate that will kill their unborn children, they're but a step away from euthanasia or killing off their seniors. If they'll kill their unwanted unborn, they're only a breath away from saying those folks in the rest home, those folks in the nursing home, they're not contributing to society anymore. Let's, let, let's pull the plug. Um, life is valuable from conception to that final breath. We need to hear that from our candidates. We need to know those are the kinds of, uh, of candidates we are uh, supporting and backing. Uh, notice I haven't mentioned what party. I don't care what party you're from. If you're not willing to say, I support life from conception all the way to the t grave, I'm against you, dead against you, hard against you, and the church should be. Finally, uh, or not finally, next one, you know where they stand on the work ethic. Um, you know, uh, where are they? Listen, that, that's a Christian point of view, stewardship. We need to know where they stand on the work ethic. The Bible says a man that doesn't work doesn't eat. Um, we need to know where they stand uh, on the work ethic. We need to know where they stand um, on, on, on the management of money, uh, how they're going to do those things. Uh, how they're going to handle uh, their money uh, and, and our money. Uh, and then finally, we, we need to ask the question, we need to look at the life and see, does this candidate, does this politician, this leader reflect a Christian lifestyle and character? Um, we need to know um, that question. We need to know 
do they love others regardless of their religion, their their race, um, you know, their economic status? Um, that they that they're going to be fair across. Listen, um, I, I'm all for Christian um, politician, one that stands for godly things. But if he stands for godly things, he's going to be fair to red and yellow, black and white. He's going to be fair regardless of their religious point of view. Uh, he, he's going to judge them, and he's going to make rules accordingly. Um, finally, we have the principle uh, of incompatibility. Uh, the principle of incompatibility. Uh, Christians should endeavor, uh, we should make every attempt to live our lives uh, separate. We can't ask for something from our leaders that we're not doing ourselves. Uh, unfortunately, uh, here's the question we have to ask ourselves. Are we reflecting what our politicians are doing or are our politicians simply reflecting what's happening in the nation? Same question of Hollywood. People rant and rave about Hollywood. I don't think so much that um, we're learning from Hollywood, but Hollywood's just showing us who we are. We cannot be incompatible. We, if we're going to expect these things out of our leaders, we, as believers, as citizens, have to live those same principles. You take those six principles and you take them as you analyze, as you look at a politician, as you get ready to vote, as you decide who you're going to support, and all of a sudden you won't become uh, a Democrat or a Republican anymore, an independent. Uh, those six principles uh, will cause you to choose a person regardless of what party they're standing for regardless of what party they claim to be in. Uh, and that's where we need to get to in this world uh, as believers, is that as Christians, uh, we look over our candidates and our leaders carefully. Most of all this evening, I want to encourage you to pray for them. Um, whether I agree with them or not, I, 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 I wouldn't have their job. I, I wouldn't, I, I don't want to be in politics. I don't, I, that has no interest to me whatsoever. I cannot imagine the pressure, uh, the constant uh, complaining. Uh, you know as well as I do, no matter which decision they make, somebody's going to be mad. Let's pray for those folks. They, um, to, to not pray for them again is like hoping your pilot is an alcoholic. Uh, let's pray for them. Let's lift them up. They need it. Uh, Lord knows they need it. Look at the paper. Look at the news. Uh, they need our prayers. But take those six principles and use them to guide you uh, as we try to move this nation where it needs to be um, and ultimately bring people to know Jesus Christ. All right. Have a good evening, and uh, we'll see you back here next week.